Okay, we're gonna be watching Link Zero, who's playing Reaper and Soldier. This is Diamond 3 on PC on Nepal. Looking for ways to improve, especially on the first map, Nepal Shrine, which I feel like is one of Soldier, my favorite hero's favorite, weakest maps. I usually pick one of my weaker heroes, Bastion or Reaper, there, which do better at close range fighting on the point. Yeah, I don't think that's necessarily wrong. I definitely, it, it is a very brawly point, and the fact that it angles uphill uh, in the center of the map, which is some, somewhat unusual, uh, definitely makes it hard to get sightlines or soldier. I don't think it's unplayable by any means. Um, I think you just really need to, to focus on side angle control and worry less about the point itself. So you come forwards. Um, so you're going to the left already, which I feel like is a problem. It, it's very important to race to the center, especially as a close range hero. Like you want to control this pillar and then control their choke. If you can control this choke, you're usually going to win the fight. So you taking this side route is not so good, unless you're planning on teleporting up the left, which I wouldn't do, but I, I, I mean, I guess it's actually probably viable. I think not teleporting and then trying to walk back to main is a big problem, because now you've lost the ability to step up and have presence on the point. As you come up here, you see the soldier. Um, so the soldier's going to be a problem on your right side. Okay, so either you can figure out like how to take this angle and then play the coast angle to get closer to, to force her off, or you need to do a lot of work in the main. Except the problem is now you've seen that there's a pharmacy and you've seen a soldier. And you basically can't do anything about pharmacy unless she happens to fly close to you. So my perspective here is that you should actually be contesting the soldier. You can't contest neither, right? If you contest neither, you're going to lose the point, right? Because the DPS are both going to, like the pharaohs can be like, oh, cool, I can freely shoot. And the soldier's like, cool, I can freely shoot over here. Obviously, you can't do anything about the pharmacy. Just go to the right. I think you need to get to the right as soon as possible to force the soldier off. I think going left here is a mistake. And then you end up dying from Vera. I think after you ate this, you should have wraith right away to make sure that you don't die to anything else. And like also you see this rocket coming at you. I think this is just pretty sloppy play. It's tough it's it's tough for you to see it though. But I think you should have been aware that the pharmacy was here on the left and you should have wraith after you got shot by the railgun. You're gonna get rezzed. Okay, so you get rezzed and then you play close left, which is, I, I don't think you bother shooting the, the, the Mercy there, right? Hey, I think it's not even worth your time. You're gonna do so little damage and she's full health, it's not even worth, like how much damage do you do here to the Mercy? Is it like five damage maybe? One damage. Yeah, see, like, you're literally doing zero damage to her. <laughs> and you see how the pharmacy now is able to take the, the, this close right? I think I really would have wanted you to be on the right. Now, you can stay here on the left and kind of zone out the hog, but I think based on where your position was previously, I think after you res, I would have gone behind this and held the right side. Because I think right is just stronger for you and it gives you more options what to do. You can potentially get attacked on two sides, but at least that gives you something that you can add value at versus on left where if they all, like let's say you play here and they all rotated and went left, then you're screwed. Okay. comes up. So I want to see a lot more headshots here. A lot more headshots. Right? I don't think you're even trying to headshot him. It looks like you're just shooting into his body, which is no good. Right? Really important is we pretty good headshots. Oh, that's, that's no good. That's three whiffs right there. Right. Yeah, that's that's really bad. Um, I don't think this is a particularly difficult shot. Like she's she's she was moving on your on your right flank, right, and clearly not trying to dodge you. Like like that should have been a kill right there. And this for sure should have been a kill. Like that that already should have been like eighty percent plus kill. You should hundred percent. You should have been killed on that four shot. Um, this is gonna cost you games. Like if you wanna if you wanna get a diamond to masters, I think that's like masters. That is like a, a walk in the park to get that kill. Okay, so quick quiz: Do you know how much damage Farah direct rocket does? Because you're at 94 right now and you're not wraithing with a Farah in your face. So Farah direct rocket does 120 damage. Damage boosted that's an extra 30 percent, which is like 155 ish, 156. So. If you're below 155, or even below 120, without Mercy Pocket, but Mercy actually dies here, if you're below 120, she can one-shot you, which is what she does right here. This is really sloppy. Like, you need to know those breakpoints. As No matter what hero you play, you need to know those breakpoints. But, like, especially if you're trying to get the Masters, you need to know these breakpoints off the top of your head. Like, immediately be like, hey, if you're 119, Rocket's coming at you, Wraith. 
Okay, don't take that risk unless you absolutely have to and don't have any other choice. But in this situation where your team has control of point, like don't there's there's no need for this. Ready for uh, I'll have round way back. Um. Yeah, so back here, like your team has full control point, right? Your mortar's here, you just wraith here and not die, right? That's the most important thing is just, just don't die in this situation. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I think it's ind indicative of overall sloppy play. Like when I see this, I don't see somebody who's very experienced in the game and knows how to survive, okay? Both your first death and your second death already tell me that you don't understand breakpoints. This is an incredibly dangerous thing to just be walking straight to the to the to the Roadhog's right, your left, unless you knew that he didn't have hook. And I don't think you knew that he didn't have hook. Yeah, so my sound's turned down, but I didn't hear it. If you knew he had hook, it's okay to do this. But if, if you don't know that he has hook, this is a, the easiest hook of this this hog's life, where you're just walking from left to right. Watching his perspective. See? You're just you're just walking a straight line. Easy, easy hook, and then you die. Again, not going for enough headshots. Also, you're going to left again instead of trying to control the right side. Okay, the right side is typically how people crack open this point on offense. Going straight up main usually doesn't work. They take left, they force the whole team to go to back in this area, and then and then there's just too many angles, and then you die. I think you really need to be going right more to hold it. All right, you rate that their railgun, which uh, is a good call. But the problem is now now you have no supports. Yeah, so your death actually made a much bigger difference than expected. Because you were dead and staggered, you are you were never up here. Like, imagine if you had never died, okay? Then you're up here, you're able to come in, You pr as soon as you hear the hog hook, you go up, you pressure the hog a ton, right? You force the hog back, which forces the whole team back, and then you have a chance here to win this fight. Your death actually on that, to that bear was actually a massive deal. Because now there's no way for you to hold this point, right? Like, nothing, nothing for this point matters. Uh... I think you gotta be getting up here, right? If I hear the hog this close, I would even teleport right here, right? If the hog wants to hook me here, no problem, right? I should not die in the situation with five people around me and the hog overextended. I think you want to get up here and get, kill his hog and prevent him from retreating. Yeah, Tracer eats that shot. Not a lot you can do right now. I think mostly it's just wait for regroup. This ends now. Oh, okay, everyone's making some poor decisions. Okay, go down here. Yep. Great. Hog's dead. I think you could even think about a teleport right now. Oh, oh great. Yeah, you see it? Yep. Yep. Go for Farah. Good. No no need to wraith there. I have no idea why you wraithed. Right? The hog is dead, the soldier is dead, and you just killed the Farah. So, what are you wraithing for? Also, try to end your wraith next to them, right? I don't know why you're trying to end the wraith so far away. Like, you're literally moving backwards. You want to end the wraith, like, right here in her face and just two-shot her. It is even, I think, mathematically possible to one-shot them. But it, the ability to actually do that in the game is zero. I have arrived. Okay, I like, I like the fact that you're waiting up here. Wait and see. I think at this point, no one's looking, so I would I would crouch walk over here versus just walking. Like, reap footsteps are crazy loud. Everyone can hear this. So you go for the hog, which I think is the right call. So, hog knocks you back here, and the thing is, like, you should have leaned more to the right to try to get up the stairs. Now that you're over here, you're kind of in a weird situation. I don't think you should be wraithing right now. Um, I think you want to wait to see what the hog is going to do. Because now that your wraith is over, like, you should just die right now. The hog should just throw his hook and kill you. So, I, I think that you you misplayed that whole hog pretty badly. That teleport is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, very, very lucky that he did not have hook available. But now that you're in, he just hooks you right away and then you die. Like... There is not a lot of higher level thinking that I'm seeing out of your Reaper play, right? I don't think you're thinking about what can the other team do to counter me. You're just thinking, oh, maybe I can ult right here. Um, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> like, A, you're teleporting. When you start your teleport, people can see you. B, you're teleporting the spot that people can see you, right? So both your starting point and your ending point are visible to the enemy, both of which are, are no good as teleports. That's 
That's it. That's like number one and number two. Number three, the hog is going to have hook off cooldown. You know that because you saw the last hook or heard the last hook. So you know hooks off cooldown is going to be ready when you come out of this. Number four, who are you even going to ulti here? The hog? Right? Uh, I don't remember Reaper's ulti DPS off the top of my head. I'm going to guess it's something like 150 damage per second or so. Maybe up to 200. But for the record, you do more damage to tanks just shooting them than your ulti does. Right? So, if your goal here is to kill the Hog, you didn't need to ulti. You could have just fought him normally. Right? You get your ulti interrupted right away, and then you end up dying. Right? And as soon as this happened, you should have hit Wraith. But instead, you try to duel. For the record, the Pharaoh wasn't even necessary. The Hog alone could have killed you. Right? I'm pretty sure he misses a shot. So this shot right here, you should be dead. Like, he definitely has time to fire the shot. He's just, he's just lining it up. Alright, so you switch off Reaper. Alright, I think you gotta get up there. You're not gonna do a whole lot from this distance. Right? You're too inaccurate this far away. Right? You're gonna start suffering fall off damage. I think you gotta get a lot closer. Unless you don't plan on contesting. You don't plan on contesting, which is also fine. Like, if you just decide, hey, I don't wanna contest this, that's fine. I think you really need to set up an angle where you can keep the mercy and pharmacy in, 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 in check, okay? So, for example, if they're standing up here, your team is gonna have a terrible time getting in. So, for starters, you should either be controlling far right or far left. Considering the fact that you have a Roadhog, far right is a much better idea. So you should already be booking it to the right side to start taking control of that. Roadhog here doesn't really matter. Right. Again, you can just take this room, go out this way, and start taking control of the right side. Alright, you're gonna go left. Which is okay, but as long as the Hog doesn't find you. This ends now. Yeah, this isn't gonna go anywhere. So, this fight is over. I think the most important thing is to not... Okay. So, the fight's clearly over, right? You've lost two already before anybody's even gotten in. You have 24% left, which means you have one more fight. If you die in the next 10 seconds, you will be staggered so badly you cannot participate in the final fight. Which is exactly what you do, right? You're going in right now despite the fact that you're down three players. And then you die here. And now you see that your team has to fight without you. You should have, as soon as the people died, you should have gone like all the way back, waited, and then regrouped and used this Kitsune to help fight. Yeah, this is uh, this is soft throwing. Your team, despite being a four and five, manages to contest this for a while. Oh yeah, see, this is where your aim lets you down. Like that shot should have been a kill. That shot should have been a kill. Pretty good job surviving here. I'd say your overall evasive movement there is good. They're obviously having trouble hitting you, but otherwise, not so great. All right, so you can come out top. So your team is running dive, which is not great for the situation. So I think my perspective is, I'm probably, I definitely don't want to stay in this room. I think this room is suicide. <laughs> I think hopefully you want to get in here. If you can get over here, this is a super strong power position. Okay, but otherwise, I would be okay even going here. Jumping straight down and then contesting the pharmacy, all right, or playing stairs. Staying in this room is no good because you're just gonna get spammed out. You're very lucky that the disruptor got blocked by a bubble. Wait, where did you use your helix? Helix here is so valuable, right? A good helix at the right time can win a fight. That's not the right time, <laughs> right? You want to confirm that there's multiple people bunched up and then go for the helix. Like right now, much better helix. Yep, I think stairs is good. I think you're often reloading early. Yeah, you're at 20, 18, 15. Yeah, right now you could still put 13 more bullets into this hog. On the pharmacy, aim's good. Tracking, tracking's good there. Well, yeah, be careful with that direct. I don't think you should have helix. He was clearly gonna vape and go around the corner. This is a bad helix. You see to the soldier to the top right. So you should have gone for the soldier right away. Right now, you should have gone for her. You see her right here. You should switch your aim immediately and then helix to where she landed and kill her. That's your job right now. Like she's fighting your Kiriko or whatever right now. Yeah. So you lost an opportunity to kill the soldier in there. First she's low, I would have gone for the helix, the direct the helix. So you see right here where she drifts, I would have gone, I would have fired a helix right here. 
Fish is dead. Oh boy. Nothing you can do about that. Feeling more powerful? I think what you're doing right now is fine. Just holding the holding the hot back alone is, is is good right now. Like yes, theoretically, your team needs your help with the pharmacy, but if the hog, if you're holding the hog back, you can take that. Okay, hog drop low, which means now you can go high, and then you can use visor here if you need to. Soldier, soldier's up. Again, you should be going for the soldier on the mercy right now. Not the hog. Please, not the hog. <laughs> You're just holding out the trigger of the invisible. Very lucky you did not get hooked there. That's good. Yep, good, good, good tracking. Oh, you should have helixed. So when you see something like this, and you see her being zapped and she doesn't fade, I would assume that she does not have fade. Otherwise, she would have faded when the when the Winston's zapping her, right? Right now, I would Helix right here and kill the Moira. So you're late on the Helix. Who needs healing? Unfortunate. So you have to kill the Moira. Like, you're like the Hog is never going to die to you and Winston. You have to find an angle to kill the Moira. Okay? I would be going here and like trying to find an angle, like even crouch if you have to, because the wind's not looking at you, right? Keep shooting the Moira, force fade. She probably fades over here, right? Somewhere in the back, and then kill her. That's your job, right? Your job is not to kill the hog. I don't know why you're giving up high ground. Bears on you, she's low. Did a pretty good job pushing. Oh, that's really, really good. The problem is your team has lost three, so you can't win this. You should just die, yeah. So that's like the second time that you've staggered pretty significantly. So I feel like you're not thinking about staggers nearly enough. I don't think you want to go this way. The, no one with Winston, you're never getting through this choke. You might as well just go low ground, right? Go this way, go out here, and then force a different angle. Even touch point to force them to drop down. Anything that's not trying to force your way through the top left door. Yeah, see now you're slow on the rotation because your team's already ready to go, but you're not here. All right, Winston was waiting for you. Disruptor's out. Now you could potentially go back high ground. But... Oh man, I don't think you're gonna get this kill. Oh, very lucky. Yeah, this is fine. He doesn't have vape right now. Yep, good. I think this is a good visor. Right, you want to leave him out quickly. Oh, kill the pharaoh in your face. All right, so 30%, you, still, you need to win three team fights in a row and you don't have ultis. So very, very important to recognize, how do I win this fight? You have to kill the supports, right? You absolutely have to kill the supports before they get manage to build ulti slash like pocket their team. Otherwise, you're not going to win this. All right, three team fights in a row is a lot. Right, see right now, this is the moment that you need to have ammo to be able to kill this Moira. At a minimum, forcing fade right away. Dropping right now is a mistake. Right here with the Sparrow, I would pop Peel Station and fight this out. If you drop here, there's no way that you can influence this fight enough to win. See? Like, your hog, your, your Winston dies right now. Like, that's your moment, right? The the Ferris not even being pocketed. You have to win this fight. Dropping from here prevents you. Like, it's gonna basically a five, six second stun, right? You drop down here, you even pop Peel Station down here, which I think is even more of a mistake. And, like, now, you've already lost one, which is almost impossible to win. You had to trade right away for your Winston to be able to win this. Yeah, this is, uh, this is no good. I don't know why you melee. Alright. Cassidy kills two, so possible. You gotta get up. Nope. I was gonna say, you have to get up and touch it. Alright, Some, somebody's gotta touch it here. <laughs> okay. So. Alright, so let's, let's recap. I think on Reaper, your biggest issues is you don't know how to maneuver and navigate the fight space to force enemies to fight you at close range. Okay, if we look at first point, like what does close range mean from my perspective? Okay, close range is not. This is so turned. <laughs> so 
until this. This is not close range. This is what I would call medium range, okay? Reaper is really bad at this distance. If you're shooting the soldier, even if she's standing still, you're only going to be doing like 40, 50 damage. If you're standing right here, you're going to be doing like 80 to 130 damage, okay? That's what I mean by you maneuvering through the fight space to get close to enemies to force them away from you, right? To create space, create value. You're consistently standing in areas where you cannot do enough damage, okay? That's, that's number one. Like, far and away, your biggest problem is just not manipulating the space well. Number two is not wraithing when, you're, when you can die. Um, and I don't know if it's a combination of reaction speed or not knowing breakpoints, but like there's quite a few deaths here that seem obvious to me that you ha that you need to wraith. Like your first two deaths, again, two deaths is massive, right? That's two lost fights. You only need to win four team fights to win a point. So in half of the fights of this, you just died to something totally preventable and easily easily preventable, right? Just wraithing. That's number two. Um, number three is your ulti is awful. <laughs> you basically got no value from any Reaper ulti in this game. Um, and number four is, number four is staggering, right? That's a big problem for you as well. Just staggering with the rest of your team and then denying your team the ability to have, have a good fight. On Soldier, on Soldier, I think that you shoot the tank too much when you have other opportunities. It's not that you don't, you exclusively shoot tank. To be clear, like you do go for backline, but I don't think you go for backline enough, and sometimes you don't save ammo to go for the backline, right? Recognizing that, that they have to be following the Roadhog out is is important, okay? But that's another good example right here where the Soldier is available right now, and you're not going for the Soldier right away. And you're way too slow, which means the Soldier is able to force off your Kiriko from high ground. Like this right here, this Soldier should be dead. This is like crazy overextension by her. Like you are in excellent position, even with 13 ammo or whatever you have, to be able to kill the soldier, right? One helix, nine bullets. Yeah, you can get this kill for sure. For sure, you can get this kill. Right? She's not dodging you. This should be an easy kill. Uh, easy kill or at least a force back. Um, that's a problem. So not target priority, right? Targeting tanks too much. Not not targeting the back line. Not being aware of the space and doing enough to hold off, like to see people on your flanks and be able to kill them, right? I think that you definitely leave some kills on the board, like you could have gone for the Helix direct in the air. Oh, that's very lucky that it happens. And then giving up prime position too easily. So, like, this is another great example where, like, why are you shooting the hog instead of shooting the high ground people? Right? And because, because you don't kill them right away, like, if the hog goes downhill, I never would have chased the hog. I would have been playing uphill the whole time. And then both the soldier and the mercy would be dead. Right? Which takes... Which means your tracer would be alive, which means you have somebody to stall point, and then you never end up losing this point. Um, going later on. Right? And this is your staggering, recognizing, hey, the fight should be over. Stop trying to live. Just die. Right? Just recognize, like, when, when do I need to die? So this would be all about off angling, okay? Go a separate way from your team. If your team's trying to force their way through top left, go main. If the team's trying to force their way through main, go top left. That's, that's something that you're not doing well either. Okay. I think I'll stop there. Hopefully those tips are helpful.